Hey guys, what's up? Evan Schneider here and welcome back to another very exciting video. Thank you so much to those of you who have subscribed to this channel. It's great to see you back and I appreciate your support. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button and for extra credit, hit that bell icon so that you can get notified of any new tutorials or videos that I release. So today I wanna to talk about Instagram. Now Instagram is something that we're all very familiar with. We use it every day for probably multiple hours and something that has grown increasingly popular on social media is the use of video. Video is a very powerful tool to communicate a message or to engage users even more than a photo can do. Today, I wanna to teach you guys how to create cinematic, beautiful, engaging Instagram video that will definitely bring your Instagram game to the next level. In this video, I'm going to be sharing my Premiere Pro settings for the best quality video on Instagram whether it's in a story or a post, whether it's square or 16 by nine or nine by 16 or even four by five. I'm also going to share a free LUT with you guys that I used in some moody footage that I shot last week in the rain. So if you wanna check that out, check out the description for download links to all of those assets. So I already have a bunch of footage that I shot last week in the rain that I want to use to create a vertical Instagram story and a vertical Instagram post. I also realized that there are multiple ways of doing these things. If you've got your own tips or you have a different way of doing it, go ahead and share those tips in the comments so that we can all see it. I want this to be a community where we're all helping each other grow, helping each other succeed in filmmaking and in creativity. Since I already shot this footage, we're gonna jump straight into Premiere Pro and get started from there. Okay, so we are here in Adobe Premiere Pro, and the first thing you wanna do when setting up your project is make sure that the timeline frame rate is the same as the frame rate that you shot in. This is extremely important because if you have a different timeline frame rate than the one you shot in, your footage will look jittery and kinda weird. So as you can see here, I have my entire timeline set up I've actually already edited my footage into a 30 second sequence and I've added music and I have some sound effects too. I've also added markers at 15 seconds and 30 seconds so that I have a visual reminder of where the Instagram story will be broken up. Now to create the Instagram story sequence, you wanna go to file, new, and sequence or you can hit command N. On the available presets, I'm going to go to digital SLR, 1080p, and then DSLR 1080p24 because I shot my footage in 24p. Then I'm gonna to go to settings and I'm going to change the frame size because we want it to be vertical 16 by nine, not horizontal. So we want it to be nine by 16. So I'm gonna change this to 1080 by 1920. Everything else looks good, and I will give my sequence name Rainy Day LA Instagram Story and press OK. So this will make us a new sequence with our 9 by 16 aspect ratio, and now you can start editing in this sequence to make your Instagram story. Feel free to get as fancy as you want or as simple as you want. You can add anything like transitions or music, sound effects. You can add text elements. You can really get extremely creative here and you can do a lot more than you would be able to with some sort of app or something on your phone. So I'm gonna go back to the Instagram story timeline that I created earlier and everything is looking pretty good but I think it needs a little bit of color correction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit this new item button and I'm gonna to go to adjustment layer. And I'm gonna hit okay. And then I'm gonna rename this adjustment layer to color correction. And I'm gonna drag this on top of my timeline and extend it all the way to the end. The next thing I'm going to do is go over to the color tab and you wanna make sure that you have your Lumetri scopes up so that you can see what you're doing to the image. It's so important to have your scopes up 
instead of just relying on looking at the viewer by eye because you can really see what's going on. I like to say what's going on under the hood and you can make sure that you're not clipping your highlights or crushing your blacks. So I'm going to highlight my color correction layer and I'm gonna go over to the creative tab in Lumetri Color and I'm gonna click the drop down on look and I'm going to browse to a LUT that I just created for this footage based on a Lightroom preset that I created. So I'm gonna hit browse and I'm gonna to go to that LUT here it is, lcmoody01.cube, and hit open. And instantly it applies the filter to this footage and it looks pretty good already. The only thing is I think it's coming off a little bit strong on the footage. So I'm gonna go over to intensity of the LUT and I'm just gonna bring that down. And I'm going to adjust it until it gives a good level of contrast and a good amount of color. So right around 60 looks pretty good to me. The next thing I'm gonna do is I feel like all of these shots overall, they feel a little bit warm and I want them to have more like blue tones, a little bit cooler look. So I'm gonna go over to basic correction and under the color temperature, I'm just gonna set that to minus 20. And already that's introducing some really nice blue tones. And if I scroll through, Everything looks really nice, really moody, nice and dark, but still has a good level of contrast and a good exposure. Now I'm noticing that this shot is looking a little bit dark. So what I can do is highlight that specific shot and then I can adjust the Lumetri color for that shot individually. So I'm gonna go to the basic correction and under exposure, I'm just gonna bring that up until I feel like it hits a good level. And that looks good right about there. And I might bring the shadows down a tiny bit to right there. So that looks pretty good. So you can see now before and after. So that looks a lot brighter and a lot better. Now you can see here that this LUT is adding a really good moody effect. And you can see that here before and after, before and after. So it's really bringing those blacks down, making them nice and dark, introducing a really good blue tone and kind of muting the colors, bringing the saturation down and creating a really nice moody look. If you like the look of this LUT, I left a link in the description where you can download this free LUT. And if you like this LUT, you might like the other LUTs I've created in the Spectra pack. You can also check out that link below. So now that we have all of this edited, we have it color corrected, we're ready to export. So to export, you wanna to go to File, Export, and then Media, or you can hit Command M as a shortcut. Under Format, you wanna choose H.264, and under Preset, you wanna choose Match Source High Bit Rate. I've found this to be the best ratio between file size and image quality and it looks great on Instagram when you bring it over to it. Instagram also prefers you upload in the .mp4 format, so this format works really well with Instagram platform. I wanna export video and audio, and under video settings, I wanna make sure that match source is selected so that it copies my timeline settings and my frame rate. I wanna make sure I have render at maximum depth checked and use maximum render quality. Click on the output name to give it a place and I'm going to put it in exports and right there, hit save and then we're ready to export. So go ahead and click export and wait for it to finish. Once it finishes exporting, you're ready to send it to your phone. So if you have a Mac and you have an iPhone, the easiest way to do this is to just use AirDrop. Uh, you can airdrop it straight to your phone and then select it from the camera roll in Instagram to post. If you aren't using a Mac or you don't have an iPhone, you can also use either Dropbox or Google Drive. So you wanna upload it to one of those services from your computer and then download the app onto your phone and then find that video and save it to your phone from there. One really cool thing to note is that a new update in Instagram stories makes it so that if you have a video that's longer than 15 seconds, Instagram will automatically split it up into the 15 second increments in your story 
so that you don't have to use an outside app to split it up and sometimes you have to pay for those or it has a watermark. So now that's a lot easier to do. Now, once you've created your Instagram story, you may want to create an Instagram post off of that story video. So for this, you'll want to use different sequence settings because the Instagram post format doesn't allow video as tall as the 9x16. So for your reference, here are the different Instagram post resolutions and aspect ratios that you can use. So a couple things to mention, if you want to create an Instagram story or an Instagram post using a video that you've already created, you have a couple options. You can either create a new 9x16 sequence and bring that video in and then scale it to fill from top to bottom and then you'll want to chop it up to the individual clips and adjust the positioning from right to left to make sure that the framing stays consistent. The other thing you can do is scale it down so that the image fits horizontally and then you can add text elements on top or bottom or you can add images on the top or bottom or you can just duplicate the video three or four times so that it fills the entire Instagram story frame. If you're using footage that you didn't necessarily shoot vertically but you shot it in 4k you might still be in luck as well because the vertical resolution of 4K footage will fit inside of the vertical 1920 resolution of the Instagram story. If you shot in HD, but you didn't shoot vertically, you may be able to pull it off by scaling it up, but it may look a little bit lower quality. I would recommend either reshooting it or just scaling it down and then filling the top and bottom with some other element. I shot all of this footage at HD 120 FPS with the Fuji X-T3 and I actually shot it vertically so that I didn't have to scale it and it would fit into that 9x16 aspect ratio for Instagram. The response I got from this cinematic beautiful sequence on Instagram stories was really awesome. People were commenting and it was just really fun to post something so high quality. So yeah, that is pretty much it. Now you guys know all of my secrets. You guys know how I do everything. And I hope you can take these tips and put them right into practice. I hope this was an inspiring video for you to go ahead and try to make your Instagram content a little bit better. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It helps other people like you to find this video and to learn the same knowledge. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys next time.